Hey guys, Chris from adapt Vision here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution to question 6 from the May 2013 POA paper 2. If you want to check out these solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so part A to the question starts off by telling us that South Tech Credit Union has 1,500 members. On the 1st of January 2013, the following are some of the account balances on the books of South Tech Credit Union. Now, they give us this big list of balances here. All right, it's not a trial balance, doesn't have a debit side, doesn't have a credit side, just a list of balances. Before we go through each item one by one, it might be a bit more efficient to check to see what they want us to do and then go through the balances. So the first thing they want us to do is list the items which are considered fixed assets of Souter Credit Union. Now, this was the 2013 paper, so they had not yet started using the terms such as non-current assets and statement of financial position and these things. But of course, we will use the more up-to-date terminology. The next part of the question says, list the items which are considered current liabilities of Souter Credit Union. Okay, so now let's go up to the list of balances there and we're gonna take a look. So if we look, loans to members due 2016. A credit union is a financial institution and financial institutions like credit unions and banks make money by lending money. And the money they lend, of course, people have to pay them back. So the loans that this company makes, the loans are actually assets. And if you look at it's the due date, it says 2016. And if we just scroll up very quickly, it says on 1 Jan 2013. So 2016 is definitely more than one year after 2013. So this item of loans to members, this is actually a non-current asset. And we're gonna put that as the first item in our list, loans to members. Now it says interest outstanding on loans to members. So that's accrued revenue, that's a current asset. Stock of stationary supplies, also a current asset. Telephone bill unpaid, that's a current liability. So maybe we could start populating that list too. So let's pull up that list and we're gonna put that item right at the top there. Telephone bill unpaid. Let's go back to the other items. So it has interest income received in advance. So prepaid revenue is also a current liability. So let's put it in to that list of current liabilities. Long-term investments in other cooperatives, right. So an investment is an asset and you see how it says long-term, that means it's non-current. So if we go back up to the non-current section, we're gonna put in long-term investments in other co-ops. Okay, next we have net book value of equipment. So equipment is a non-current asset, so that's gonna be the third item in our list of non-current assets. Then we have mortgage, which is a non-current liability. Mortgage interest outstanding. That is definitely a current liability. Then we have bank, which is an asset, current asset. And these three items here, members welfare fund, education fund, unappropriated profits. Those three items are reserves, capital reserves. So those are neither assets nor liabilities. Okay, so we've just done part one and part two. Let's scroll down and take a look and see what part three is asking us to do. So it says draft the balance sheet extract to show the capital section of the balance sheet for South Tech Credit Union as at 1 Jan 2013. Now, I want you to notice it says worth three marks. Now, if we go up to the information, the last three items that I was mentioning to you about, well, yeah, sorry, talking to you about the Members Welfare Fund, the Education Fund, these things, those are all going to be in the capital section in, because they are capital reserves. So let's pull up that item on this side here. So we'll see Souter Credit Union Balance Sheet Extract or again, Statement of Financial Position Extract as at 1 Jan 2013. So capital, let's just say capital and um, reserves. All right, now we are going to put those three items as they are, Members Welfare Fund, Education Fund and Unappropriated Profits. But the thing is, this is a credit union, it's a cooperative and cooperatives members are the shareholders or owners of the cooperative. So what's happening with the share capital figure? If we go back to that whole list of balances and you take a look through, there's nothing to tell you about share capital. Even if we go up to the top sentence, all they tell us is that South Tech Credit Union has 1500 members. They don't tell us how much each member paid in terms of the number of shares or the value of shares or anything like that. So even though this question is only worth three marks and what we have will probably get you the three marks, I feel somewhat compelled to actually go through and find the share capital figure. 
So I do beg your indulgence, but just follow me on this. Okay, so to find capital, we can use the basic formula assets minus liabilities. So I have capital, sorry, calculation of share capital figure. Of course, this is not something any question asks you to do. This is something I'm doing because I think it needs to be done. So I'm not doing like a proper balance sheet or anything like that. I'm just putting a list of assets followed by a list of liabilities, finding the difference, and then that's going to give me total capital. I have to subtract from it the figures that we are using currently in the capital section, the, the funds and the unappropriated profits in these things. So for assets, I have in no particular order other than order of appearance in the information, loans to members, the long-term investments in other cooperatives, and the net book value of the equipment. Then we also had the interest outstanding on loans to members, the stock of stationary supplies, and the bank account. Now that gives us a total for, for assets of $293,020. For liabilities, we have mortgage, then we have telephone bill unpaid, interest income received in advance, mortgage interest outstanding, and that gives us a total of 95360 We are going to subtract the total asset value of 293 and 20, right? Sorry, we're going to take 293 and 20 and subtract the 95360 and that's going to give us net assets of 197660 And you're seeing a little calculation here. Now, the capital and reserves figures we have are the Members Welfare Fund, Education Fund, and the Unappropriated Profits, which gives the 132860 so to find the share capital now, we're going to take the 197,660 of net assets and subtract the 132,860, and we're going to get 64,800. So now let's scroll back up quickly to the actual answer for part three to the question that I was doing before I took this detour. Right, here we go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the 64,800, and all I'm going to do now is find the total for that section of 197,660. Right, so again, I, I think there was probably an error in the paper because either they forgot to give you the share capital or information to find it because I can't see all of that working being worth only three marks. Anyhow, again, mistakes happen. Let's move on with life. Let's take a look at part B to this question. Okay, so part B reads, the board of directors of South Tech Credit Union decided to raise more capital by advertising for new and old members to purchase shares. They have provided the following information on receipts and payments. Okay, let's see. So on the 2nd of Jan 2013, we have the following information. Sorry, we have advertisements 31,000, followed by additional office expenses 6. Then we have sold 100,000 $1 shares. Okay. Then it says received registration fees of $5 each from 2,100 new members. And it says all receipts and payments were made by check. The first thing they want us to do is to prepare the journal entries to record the sale of shares and the receipt of registration fees. That's seven marks. So the journal entries are to record the sale of the shares and the receipt of registration fees. So there are only two things we have to record here. So the sale of the shares is $100,000. So it's $100,001 shares. So the value of shares is 100000 by one, right? So that's $100,000. So we're going to put the general journal here. Now, of course, don't forget the debit column goes here. Then we have, whoops, sorry, we have a credit column. Now, when you are entering information in your general journal, you enter your debit entries first, followed by your credit entries, which are slightly indented relative to your debit entries, just to separate them visually. Now, the debit that's happening here is to bank. We're going to debit bank because bank is an asset. Money is coming in, which means the bank balance is increasing. And assets increase with debits. The corresponding credit will go to share capital for $1,000. And we'll see it says to record the issue and full subscription of 100,000, sorry, uh, ordinary shares at a dollar each, or just 100,000 shares. I think there's ordinary preference here. Okay, now the other part of it was the receipt of the registration fees. So it says received registration fees of $5 each from 2,100 new members. So, to, so 2100 by 5 will give us 10500 So the debit, of course, is going to go to bank. The corresponding credit will go, of course, to registration fees. And the narration will simply say to record the receipt of $10,500 of registration fees from 2100 new members. Sorry, almost forgot that part. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so the last part of the question says prepare the bank account of South Tech Credit Union to record the above receipts and payments. Be sure to include the ba balance at bank as at 1 Jan 2013. Six marks. 
Okay, so the balance at bank, I think, was um, we'll pull up the information from the start of the question. And of course, that'll go on the debit side because bank is an asset and assets have debit balances. Okay, let's take a look at the information on the 2nd of January. So we have two payments, one for advertisements of 31000 one for additional office expenses of $6,000. Those will both go on the credit side because those are both payments or outflows which will decrease the bank balance. Bank is an asset. If your asset balance is decreasing, if your asset is decreasing, you credit to record the decrease. The next things we have to record are the receipts of the share capital and the registration fees. Those will, of course, go on the debit side because they will increase the bank balance. Bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Now we have to find the balance in the bank account. So what we will do is we'll add up the items on the debit side, add up the items on the credit side, and find the difference. And we'll put that here. It'll say balance carried down 116000 The totals will agree, and we'll bring the balance down on the debit side. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the May 2013 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Be sure to subscribe and also remember to check out my website where you'll find some free PUA handouts you might find useful. And here guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.